What is up, YouTube? Welcome to my crib. I've always wanted to do that. This is gonna be a gym tour though. So I've had this gym for like a year now. I said I was gonna do a gym tour and I haven't yet. So gonna be going over some of the pieces, why I love it, why I love this gym so much. But first and foremost, people have been like, it's fucking a little extreme to have your own gym. I'm like, yes, of course it's a little extreme. But when I think of like investing my money into what's best for me, Investing in yourself is like the bullshit people always say, and I don't really know what that means until you do something like this, where this is really fucking expensive, clearly, but the output that I get from this, non-monetarily, but to be able to focus, to be able to train, to be able to put the effort and energy I need to into my craft without distractions, to not have people fucking with me, bothering my workouts, all that stuff that like, I enjoy meeting people, but it really ruins my workout when people interrupt me. This has definitely excelled my career and probably been one of the best investments I have ever made. So one of those things like Calvin buying new cameras, that's him investing in his craft. It's not always about putting your money into stocks and bonds to make more money. It's about putting your money into crazy things that make you better and enjoy life more. And for me, this has been the, probably the best thing I've ever spent my money on. I'd sell three Ferraris for this any day. Anyways, on to the gym. First thing first, we have this little corner of legs right here, purposefully by the door for a little bit of airflow in here. It's got two different quad extensions because I'm crazy like that. One of them, they are carrying old school quad extension over here. It's a little bit more, it's a lot lighter, but it feels a little bit better, more contracted on my quads. So that's something I'll do at the end of workouts, supersets, drop sets, stuff like that. But when I re need to go really heavy, this prime plate loading machine is the absolute best because you can stack like 500 pounds on there and just get after it. And then from there, I have two different hamstring curls. I have a seated and a lying. Again, I really like a lot of prime stuff, especially the plate loaded pieces. So I have this lying plate loaded hand curl where you can change the tension curve, whether you need it at the bottom or the top. And this has been one of my favorite ones to use for a long time. Also this pre-core seated one right here. Can't change the tension curve on it at all like this, but it's still really good to have the same one at Revive Gym, which is down the street. But I like it, so I bought the same one. Next. A few things I was trying to be efficient with space. I could have fit more equipment in here, but I wanted it to feel open and like a real gym rather than just cramming equipment into a storage area. So I got this abductor adductor combo, the Cybex Eagle. They don't make the same one anymore, but this is the best combo one. Typically you get two separate pieces and they work better, but this one actually works really good for adduction and abduction. So I like this a lot. You can just switch the thing around, move the handle, the seat goes all the way back or forward, whatever you need to get more glute, more adductors so it feels really good i also have this sled which i have only used like three times in my life but knees over toes guys so this is good for your knees so my knees ever get fucked up i have it on deck seated calf machine super simple fucking love seated calves this is something i never had at one of my gyms this is the gym leco piece right here but a uh, tibia machine i've been doing this a lot more just to help overall calf development also really good for your knees to have really strong tibia as well as calves so very important i got a little preacher curl station right here Nothing needs to be explained about that. It is what it is. Also strategically by the bay door. I have all my dumbbells over here, a couple benches scattered around, and I purposely have five pound increments all the way up to 50 pounds. And then when I get over 50, I get to 60, and then it goes up by 10. Cause I typically don't do 115s or 125s or anything like that. If you ask Justin, he'd give me shit for that cause he wants to go up by 2.5 pound increments. So he's trying to get me dumbbells that are a little bit smaller increments, but you know what? Fuck that, we're trying to be a jack. I'm just kidding, I'm probably gonna actually change that. But for the time being, I just wanted to use heavier weight and didn't need to cluster more dumbbells that I didn't need. So I went up by 10 pounds instead of five. Um, also very important to the gym. You can't have a gym without a 1969 LS3 powered Chevrolet Camaro sitting in the middle, stick shift of course. But this is where I store it right now. Should probably move it because it's a little unsafe right here, get covered in dust, but I don't have room in my garage right now. So it is what it is. Cable machines. I have two different styles. I have the, I don't even know what you call these. What the fuck are these things called again? Everyone has a different name for them. Multi-purpose arm moving cable functional machine. Essentially you can go up, down, out and in. This Nautilus one and the Prime one are the two best ones. This is the one I got, the Nautilus one. And it lets you do like bicep curls, flies, whatever you want. I have a bench in front and you can adjust it, the width and the angle of it. Just a little bit easier than the eight stack, but you still need an eight stack cable machine. So I have this beautiful thing over here. Funny story, sad, very sad news. Someone took my car and put it in first gear. I leave it in neutral because it's flat ground in here. And I put my foot on the clutch, turned it on, stepped out of it and it launched. And I fucked up the whole bench and the bottom of my car right here. So this whole machine is a little twisted because I crashed my car into it. And it was a really sad day, but it still works. All I did was lose a bench and a spot to put my decline. So it is what it is. 
Um, nothing else really special over here. There's no AC in this gym, so I have all these big ass fans. I have one on the ceiling, two on the floor. This one saves my fucking life. It is so hot in here in the summer. I'm already sweating just talking. Calvin's gonna break his camera. Moving on, I got a squat rack, multi-purpose squat rack. I got the landmine squat rack. Uh, dip machine and everything in here. I don't have a bench press in here at all, like a regular incline or flat bench press. So if I were to ever do flat, close grip, whatever, I'll just put a bench in here. I just, again, I want it to be really functional with my space and I don't really flat bench ever. So I didn't want to have that in here. Then arm machines. I don't have a lot of arm machines. This is currently the only tricep machine. It's a dip Atlantis piece. This machine is really fucking good. It feels great, but it's a little bit too light. So I have a gym pin. I think I have my gym pins on the cable machine right now, but I put a gym pin in there to make it a little bit heavier and it feels great. I think I have another like overhead extension Atlantis one that I ordered forever ago and just taken fucking year to deliver. It is what it is. <clears throat> I got a gym Leco bicep curl here. This one feels really fucking good, but if you have long arms, you lose a lot of the tension at the top of it. So I have to sit up at the top. If I do two hands sitting up higher, it feels absolutely amazing. I really like that. Got the OG hammer strength here. You guys all seen that at the gym, preacher curl plate loaded. T-bar back, back row, I think is one of the most crucial back pieces for back pieces. Bent over rows are great, but sometimes your lower back is just taxed. And if you're really trying to isolate your back instead of hips, hip hinge, getting all that out of there, this machine is incredible for it. And this Jim Leco piece is good for tall people at least. And I really like this one. It works great. Um, I have no idea how to organize all this, but I'll just be moving on this line. This piece right here, the Star Trek machine, I'd never tried this before, but I was looking for a flex leverage horizontal row, just like this. Also the prime plate loaded one is really good. I'm still trying to get the prime one, but this is similar to the flex leverage one. It's an old school one. I'd never tried before, but Dorian had sent it to me and he's like, yo, check it out. Just try this one, see if you like it. And I loved it. So huge fan of that. Um, you'll notice obviously all the plates say pure muscle and fitness on it. That's because I didn't want to partner with, I talked to Panana, I talked to Hammer Thranks, talked to people about partnering with someone doing a gym and they all wanted me to only have their equipment in here. And I just didn't want to do that. So Pierre hit me up and like, yeah, we'll help you build your gym. We'll source it for you. And I was like, fuck it, sweet, let's do it. And they let me get all the pieces I wanted. So that was really cool. <sighs> so this is a really cool piece, kind of an older one, but onto the cooler pieces, this Nautilus super pullover machine. This is one of the OG ones you see in Dorian Yates Blood and Guts. And this was one that I absolutely wanted in this gym, whether or not I used it enough, which I have been using a lot. I needed this in my gym because Dorian Yates had it and he's one of the fucking goats. So it was really cool. These old chain driven machines, I'm a huge fan of. They just look old school and rough and tough and they feel great. They just don't make machines like they used to. I feel like they used to have like engineers and physiotherapists, kinesiologists building machines and they all worked so good. I used to fucking, Love all the old machines. This machine, I honestly barely use, so I'm gonna skip for that one. Panada, there's a few Panada pieces I love, a few not so much. This is one of the ones I love a lot. You can switch your grip from pretty much pronated to supinated, semi-supinated, semi-pronated, and it feels really good. It's a high row and it pulls you right into the perfect spot. It gets heavy as shit real quick. So I'm a huge fan of this one. I'm gonna actually be doing this today after this video. Then I have a low supinated grip here. One of these machines I can lie out front, hit different angles. I don't have a crazy amount of machines, but I really tried to make sure that I was getting different angles, different movements. So I have a high row, a low row, a fucking bent over row, a row up here, different machines. So I'm not kind of going overkill. Oh God, I need to get back in shape to try and do this shit. I got a, what is it called? Inversion tables so that I can be tall enough for classic physique Olympia, put an extra inch on my height. Don't actually know if that does anything. I don't use it very often. I did use it in like three, four weeks out of the Olympia to try and be taller. It was, I figured it was worth the risk. Cardio wise, it doesn't really matter. I got a recumbent bike, a treadmill, Stairmaster. Fuck cardio. You guys know what that is, not really special. Then chest machines, because everyone loves chest machines. I wanted a flat, I wanted an incline, and I wanted a decline. Most decline machines hurt my shoulder because I've torn my labrum like four or five times. This Panada one is one of my favorites. I'm a huge fan of this one. You can either go neutral grip or pronated grip. So I'm a big fan of that. I have this pad here because I've been trying to get really fucking crazy range of motion and I have really long arms. So sometimes I put this behind my back on these machines and allows me to stretch a little bit more. This one is one of the pure iron. So pure muscle is not called pure iron anymore. I don't know what it's called, but pure muscle is trying to build their own equipment. And this is one of the pieces they sent me and it is fucking incredible. There's a piece in the back here that most machines don't have. And it's like, it's just a little slat in there that slides in or out. So you can either do unilateral or bilateral. 
I typically have it separate because my shoulders are really uneven. Make sure I have the same weight on each arm. Feels really good, incline chest. And it's slightly converging. So most machines, you kind of come out and push out here. Whereas the actual movement of the pec is to bring the elbow across the body. So this one forces you to do that like a dumbbell and it feels really good. Huge fan of this one. Another machine from Star Trek, the blue machines that I had requested to get a flex leverage piece. And they were like, try this one out. We can get this one. I tried it, absolutely loved it. It's the same concept, it's converging. So instead of pushing out, it comes in a little bit. Awesome machine, love this one as well. <sighs> These two machines, I don't know why I have two of them, but I found two, so I went two. I never used to, I fucking hated these machines. I hated rollers for chest. And then when I started training with Hani, he's like, you have long ass arms, you should try this machine. And we were over at a buddy of mine's gym out in like an hour or so away from here. And I tried it and it felt great. So I was searching for it. And essentially it's just taking the whole forearm out of your body and you don't have to think about gripping, which the more you kind of grip, pull them from here, your bicep, forearm, shoulders will be more engaged. You just put the pads on your elbows and you squeeze the shit out of it. I got a 10 degree incline one and a 45 degree incline one. I superset them because why not? Again, these are pretty OG. This one's chain driven. You don't see a lot of these ever, but I pretty much strictly been using these for chest flies. I barely even use the pec deck anymore. So I'm a huge fan of these. From there, i had been slacking on training shoulders lately for whatever reason. But another prime plate loaded machine, I like the prime plate loaded machines a lot. This one's really good. It's a little bit of a wider grip and it pushes you straight up instead of forward and close. So it's not, you're not as strong in this position, but it isolates your delts a little bit more, at least for myself. And then this arsenal piece here, this is one of my favorite arsenal pieces. It's the opposite of that. You're pressed a little bit close, a little bit more angled in. So you're coming in here. It's a little bit of a safer position for your shoulders, but engages a little bit more tricep and get a little bit stronger like that. But they're two completely different presses. Again, I try not to have copycat equipment having the same shit in here. Then I got a pec deck. Like I said, I haven't been using this a lot for pecs even, but I'm sure I will soon. And I've been using it for rear delts a little bit every now and then. And then moving on to the leg and stuff, I got a Cybex hack squat. On hack squats, the only thing this one's missing is it doesn't go all the way to, what? What do I call it? I call it a hack squat? Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Smith machine, the only downfall is that's as low as it goes. So I have to stand on something if I want to do RDLs, but I really like the straight up and down ones. A lot of Smith machines are angled and I do not like that. Cybex one's really smooth, straight up and down. So I'm a huge fan of that one. <sighs> Again, in the, I don't know, in the era of efficiency, I wanted a standing calf raise and I also wanted a Viking press. This Panada machine turns into both. So you can either stand here and press or you can get underneath put your hands on there and do calves so good standing calf machine i've been using it more so for calves than i have shoulders but it's a great machine for both this machine there's a lot of debate on what people think is the best belt squat i don't give a fuck what anyone says this is my favorite one i've tried so many this is the first one i ever tried i love belt squats and i didn't see one for like six years and i just hated belt squats i was like i don't know why i used to love it and it was because i really like this machine I started squatting really narrow and doing everything really narrow for a while because my hips were getting tight and I just thought it would help my quads and it wasn't. My sweep was kind of going away and in the last year I've been doing a lot of belt squat and going really wide and getting deep and it feels so good on your lower back. It gets the outer sweep, you get nice and deep like a sumo squat and it feels incredible. And I also have spoken a lot that I used to get migraines, headaches, all this shit from squatting a lot because I just have really bad trap and neck pain. And from holding the bar like that, it fucked my neck up. So this is a really good movement that I put in that's very similar to a squat, but no pressure on your spine. So it feels absolutely amazing. I'm a huge fan of a belt squat. If you guys have one at your gym, you should definitely use it. I never even know what to call these things. Glute ham raise, GHR. Justin is a huge believer in these in terms of lower back strength, hamstring strength, all that good stuff. So I've been using this a little bit. He's going to put more specific things in my programming, but I just had, I had a swing squat here that broke. So they took it away and I just replaced it with this. Haven't really used it a lot. <clears throat> and then onto the fun leg pieces. I got the Cybex leg press. This is the simplest, most basic leg press, but it's just so incredible. It's also the same style one that Doran Yates used back in the day. So a little sentimental like that, but it also is just a fucking amazing leg press. I still haven't found a better leg press than this one. The little small, sometimes I want to put my legs wider or higher if I'm trying to move like kind of foot pattern, but it still feels incredible. And I have other leg presses if I need to do that. Also Cybex. Cybex makes really good fucking leg equipment. Huge fan of them. This is the squat press. So it comes down at a little bit more of an arc of an angle. So it feels a little bit more like a squat, but still a leg press. I kind of go back and forth between these two. This is pretty much last year Olympia prep. This is a machine I started with. 
pretty much every leg day my entire Olympia prep, I stacked it up and I was getting up to like 20 reps and it would just destroy my legs. So that thing helped me win this Olympia for sure. Absolutely, especially with a fucked up lat when I couldn't hold a lot of things. This machine, I haven't used a whole lot yet just because I was such a big fan of the leg presses, but it's a newer piece. Also from Pure Muscle, one of their experimental designs they're making, it's more of a hip press. So you kind of sit upright and it brings your knees really high and really close to you. So it's really good for getting kind of that deep kind of adductor in there if you're going wide, more quad sweep. Fan of this too. Like I said, I haven't used it a lot, but this one and that chest machine that I mentioned that Pure makes, they're just prototypes, literally first rendition, they sent it to me and they both feel incredible. The chest machine is a little bit more fine tuned, I think, than this, but they're both really good. And then last couple of pieces, I have the Atlantis pendulum squat here. Big fan of this one too. I've tried a lot of pe pendulum squats. There's a weird white one at Revive. I don't even know what brand it is. It feels pretty good, but this one's just way better. If you don't put a lot of weight on it, it's light, it's not too heavy. And you can also load the shit out of it and it just puts you in such a deep stretch position. I always say the secret to getting big legs is just range of motion, having your hamstring touch your calf and this thing forces you down into that hole and I love it. So I've been using this a lot lately. Hack squat, another staple piece. All you really need for big legs are some dumbbells, some type of hack or pendulum squat and a leg press. And you could do three exercises and have huge legs. Hack squat, again, Cybex, I love this. This is also a Dorian Yates piece. You can see a little trend here, but he was fucking huge and he knew what I was doing. They're so simple, they're so small, but they feel so good. This machine is just straight down, also drops you really deep into the hole, gets really fucking heavy. If I fill this thing with plates, I will die and get crushed by it. So all these machines actually are heavy enough to allow me to push myself put a little band on this one specifically because it drives you so deep into the hole. I just leave this band on here all the time and it kind of helps take some of the tension off your knees when you're in the bottom so you don't fucking blow your knees out. But yeah, that's pretty much all the machines in here. There's not a crazy amount, but like I said, I have specific pieces that I've used over the years that I like to use. I have three or four pieces for every body part, a little bit more for legs because with legs you need a little bit more. And that's pretty much the gym setup. I have a few more pieces on order that haven't come that I don't even know what they are. Some of them have gone over to Revive and they're gone and I'm probably not gonna get them. So I'm gonna have to reorder different ones which are like a standing machine Atlantis lateral raise. I really like those, don't have one. But other than that, I really don't feel like anything's missing here. It's pretty much a fucking playground and I'm really pumped that I have this equipment now because going forward and if I ever move or do anything, I would love to build this pretty much exact same setup in my backyard one day and that's my dream essentially, but probably with like a half court basketball court or something like that. And maybe a little loft to chill in, something like that. Dreams for the future. But this is it. This is the crib, the gym that really helped me kind of survive in the chaos of busy gyms and just enjoy training a little bit more. Especially last year when I tore my lat and I was just trying to hide from people and just focus and didn't want people fucking with me and talking to me. You know, I, I can be social, but I just don't want people fucking with me in the middle of my workout. So just if you see me working out, don't do that. Just leave me alone. But yeah, this is it. So appreciate you guys. <sighs> if you stayed this, this entire gym tour video, then good for you. You made it to the end. Appreciate you guys watching. I got to go work out. Got to get my shit together. So see you next time. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired.